So uh, we continue with the next session. We will probably be able to listen to uh, the previous one a little bit later. So the next uh, speaker, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Fichenko from the Institute of Traumatology and Orthopedics of Ukraine, chairman of the board of the Ukrainian Association of Endoscopic Spine Surgery. This topic is a basic principle of unilateral bipolar endoscopic spinal surgery. So welcome. It's your Dr. Fichenko. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, you can, can you proceed. hear me? Yes, perfectly. You can proceed. Uh, thank you. My name is Dr. Fischenko. I am from Ukraine, and I will introduce you uh, my presentation about, about basic principles of unilateral biportal endoscopic spinal surgery. Um, so, what is the advantages of biportal endoscopic spine surgeries? This is two a small incisions, low damage of muscles, low damage of spine ligaments, low bleeding, and um, uh, low infection rate, small scar formation, excellent view, short term of hospitalization, much cheaper than monoportal, and much less radiation from uh, than monoportal. Unilateral biportal endoscopy is universal minim minimal invasive technique for treatment of the degenerative disease of lumbar spine. So we will, uh, I will tell you about basic principles, properly prepare the equipment and select the necessary instruments. So the main principle of BES, this is triangulation, uh, water circulation, and uh, we don't have natural cavity, so we need to form this. The combination of two portals provides a clear video control over the procedure and the formation of the correct liquid circulation. The absence of natural cavity as in the joint slightly complicates the surgery. That uh, is why creating a working space is an important component of UBE surgery. With the routine of uh, observance of those principles, the operations is uh, facilitated and um, the likelihood of serious complication is reduced. So what equipment you need for this? Hello, Professor Yaki Fischenko. Uh, you, did, uh, you didn't apply your presentation. Your slide didn't move. Move, don't, uh, didn't move? Uh, didn't move. Uh, Maybe we now, need to share your, your screen. Okay, uh, wait a second. Uh, uh, in the bottom of your screen, you will have the share button. Yes. Can you see it? Yes, yes we can now. see. Uh, now, uh, now you see it? The list yeah. of required equipment. Yes, yeah. yeah, you you can yeah, this is there. Yeah. Oh, okay, the list of required equipment. X-ray operation tables with Wilson spine frame. You need C arm, you need arthroscopic system with monitor, camera system, light source, light cable, arthroscopy pump, uh, pump is optional. I prefer the natural gravity, shaver console and handpiece, zero degree arthroscope, and maybe you need a 30 degree arthroscope optional. A radio frequency generator uh, and two electrodes, five millimeter head RF electrode and one and a half millimeter headed electrode and also aspiration system. So this is the schematic location of uh, personal and equipment in the surgery room. I prefer um, my endoscopic surgery by myself. I don't need the um, uh, additional surgeon. So me and my nurse. Uh, the uh, location of a monitor, C arm, and uh, the scrub nurse you can see on the uh, slide. So what surgical instruments you need? Um, 
you can use uh, the spe special UBE set, but it's optional. And uh, what you need del delator set, the telescopic delator set. The I use curettes, uh, Kerison rongers, pituitary rongers, root retractors, Indian knife for cut the disc, osteotomes, five millimeter, and mallet. So uh, if you have an opportunity, you need to get the special UBE uh, set. It's useful. You can use uh, from the uh, telescopic delators and uh, uh, some special uh, stuff for make easy outflow for the liquor. Uh, this is the view of the Mayo stand for endoscopic surgery. So we use uh, special surgical instruments, the pituitary rongers, which I use. This is uh, 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 different sizes. The first one is the um, uh, wide one, the big one. I use it for uh, remove the bone fragments. The two of them, um, the two next one is one is uh, curved, uh, up bit and uh, another straight, uh, you can remove the soft tissues and the, uh, the lowest one is a very gentle one for only for uh, soft tissues remove. Uh, also, you need the scalpel, trocar, telescopic dilators and uh, um, uh, retractor for uh, separate uh, different sieve tissues from the bone. The root retractors we use to protect the nerve uh, root during the disc, uh, discectomy. <clears throat> also, we use two types of the Carison ro rogers. The most useful is a three millimeter, 40 degree up lumbar carison. And uh, when I walk from the right side, I use three millimeters, uh, 90 degrees down lumbar carison. Also, I use, uh, I prefer to use uh, two types of curettes. One 70 degree, four millimeter curettes for walking off removing big pieces of bone fragments and 30 degrees, three millimeter curette for the probing and handling of soft tissue. Also, I need mallet, five millimeter osteotom for partial laminectomy in the medial surface of the lamina and Indian knife for perforation of the disc. Uh, what, what kind of shavers I use? There, I use a striker shaver. Then first uh, you can see um, the uh, aggressive plus five millimeter shaver and two types of bur, the uh, five millimeter and four millimeter bur. I use also radio frequency, the five millimeter headed RF electrode is useful for debridement and coagulating outside of the spinal canal and uh, one and a half uh, headed curved RF electrode is a specific RF tip for small bleeds of transforminal approach or bleeding on the radical artery and specifically used for bleeding control of small vessels on, the, on or near the dura. The patient is placed on the uh, X-rays transparent table on the Wilson frame to achieve flexion in the lumbar spine. In this position, the maximum increase of the intraspinosis gap is achieved with, uh, which is important to reduce unnecessary bone resection. The head and the thoracic spine of the patient must be at the lumbar spine height or below it for normal blood um, flow of, to reduce uh, blood loss and easy to use uh, it necessary maintain to the systolic, uh, systolic blood pressure at the rate up to uh, 100 millimeters the correct circulation of the saline is essential to keep the surgical site clean. If the floor is not uh, sufficient, 
the visual field might become cloudy due to the bleeding from various uh, areas, muscles, cortical and uh, cancellous bone, and the epidural vessels. There are two options for fluid uh, supply using the arthroscopic pump and the natural gravity. The using of atroscopic pump is optional. Uh, the optional fluid pressure, the optimal fluid pressure is about 30 millimeters um, uh, Hg. Allows keep the working uh, field clean. It also prevents the development of severe complication in the form of increasing the intracranial pressure in patient due to the flow of saline through the spinal canal. Working under the natural gravity of the fluid is carried out by handling the saline bags on tripod. The optimal height of placing saline bags is uh, 160 to 170 centimeters. Depend on the needs, the pressure of the supplied field can be controlled by adjusting the height of the tripod. Never hang saline bags too high to reduce the bleeding if the saline outflow is poorly adjusted. Do not go forward if the good outflow is not provided. Smooth drain, uh, drainage should be achieved rather than high, uh, higher pressure over influence of the saline. The outflow of saline can be poor if the, in a case of the small incision in the skin and muscle faster influence uh, muscle relaxation and thick subcutaneous uh, adipose tissue. Saline adduction is an important consideration uh, uh, in patient positioning. Properly adjusting count flow will ensure you to do not stand in a puddle. This is achieved by installing special barriers under the antimicrobial in, uh, incise drape. Thus, the solution is um, uh, channeled into the catching, uh, catchment basin. Additionally, you can slightly incline the table in case of the uh, intralaminar approach. The outflow is on the opposite side from the surgeon. When the, um, uh, when the transforminal approach is applied, the uh, outflow is on the side of the surgeon. The main radiological uh, handmarks uh, for access the required level and the uh, spinosis process, disc space, and the NG of the cranial lamina. X-ray control is carried out uh, through anterior posterior uh, projection without any angles. So the uh, indications for interlaminar approach is the disc herniation, central, lateral, and foraminal uh, stenosis from the contralateral side. The far lateral uh, approach we used for foraminal and extra foraminal disc herniations, foraminal uh, stenosis, far out syndrome. In the case of a left side approach, the proximal port should be uh, set five millimeters lateral from the line of the spinosis process above the cranial lamina. The distal walking portal is drawn at uh, two centimeters caudally. The distance between the canal um, centers is usually three centimeters. In uh, overweight patient, the distal canals is performed one centimeter caudally. For in case of transforminal access, it is necessary to uh, indent two, three centimeters from the extrapedicular line, depending on the size of the patient's subcutaneous fat. For the um, slanted uh, patients, it's shown to be two centimeters. For the overweight patients, three centimeters. The in incision should be made over the uh, transverse process. So the conclusion, the UBE is the best patient care. This is minimally invasive, low postoperative pain, fast recovery, low complications rate. Good options for the surgeons. Uh, surgeons. This is easy education curve. And good for hospitals, 
cheaper than monoportal and short hospitalization rate. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks, Dr. Yakupishenko. Thanks very much. Thank and you. Dr. Yes. Yes. yes, so th thank you, um, Dr. Pishenko, for the wonderful presentation. So it was nice to see your experience uh, using a very uh, nice instrument. So please, uh, if there are questions, uh, record them and we will discuss this uh, later or send the question to the Zoom platform. I'll leave your email, we will contact you. So now I am very pleased to uh, Welcome the next speaker, Dr. Maxim Shalali. Uh, we spoke about before, he is one of the chairman of this uh, meeting and the organizer of the French section of this international uh, society. So he's based in uh, Grasse in France, which is the, the south part of France. And his topic is very original. It's about sacroiliac denervation using UB procedure. Welcome, Maxim. I, uh, do you see my presentation? It's okay? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, so uh, the topic of my presentation will be uh, the UBI sacroiliac joint denervation. So the sacroiliac joint pathology is very uh, frequent. It's a 22% of, low back, of uh, all low back pain. And after a lumbar fusion, you can find 40% of patients with uh, low back pain. So there is a lot of treatment options for this pathology. There is a physiotherapy, injection, radiofrequency, some technique of open fusion. And since uh, some years, we have some technique of minimal invasive fusion. The diagnosis of uh, sacroiliac pain is clinic, clinical on injection or X-ray, nothing, MRI or scanner. So we can say that the diagnosis is examination and injection, te injection test. So uh, there is a lot of tests, but uh, the most important test is 40 test. And uh, we have uh, another test like fiber test, distraction test, gastric test. If you have uh, more than uh, three tests positive, we can say that this patient has a sacroiliac pain. So uh, the problem that uh, in this pathology, the diagnosis is not with X-ray, MRI, CT scan. So uh, I, I see a lot of patients with this kind of pathology and I wanted to find a, a response to this. So almost of it, sacroiliac joint denervation, innervation coming from the first, the second, or the three sacral hole. So uh, we have, I guess you see 85% of Innovation coming from this source. So I wanted to uh, try to know what the interest of endoscopic this kind of pathology. The problem when you use percutaneous radio frequency system, you don't see what you are cutting. You have a um, system of electromyography, but you don't see what you are doing. So endoscopic can you help, I can help you to uh, see what you are cutting, and you can have better accuracy and have better results. So there is uh, some uh, technique described in monoportal endoscopic surgery. They show uh, good results, but you need the monoportal uh, equipments and you need a special probe or special technology to do it. So uh, I don't have this technology in my operating room. So I wanted uh, to uh, find the technique to do it by UBE. So uh, now we have in France, uh, some techniques, minimal invasive techniques, but they are aggressive. And I wanted to uh, find what which was to do this kind of technique. So uh, we have some papers so that uh, the most effective treatment is fusion, the second effective treatment is thermocoagulation, and the third is conservative treatment. So I try to uh, find a technique to uh, do uh, with a uh, if you want to see this, this um, kind of denervation. So uh, I found a docky point near the first sacral hole and I describe two uh, points with uh, one with camera and one uh, with a radio frequency probe on X-ray. 
and after I do a derivation of second and third all with uh, this uh, point, the docking point is uh, between the second and the third all of cycle. So uh, how it, what do you feel find with UB? So it's patients, it's uh, patients 66 years old, you have a sacroiliac pain after a fusion, and I do an ejection, ejection help him. So I've decided to uh, do this kind of uh, denervation. So uh, you have a docking point. You uh, put your camera on your instrument and you find easily uh, the nerve coming from the first hole of sacrum. Uh, you can see at few hours the nerve, you have a first sacral hole and uh, at nine hours you have a sacroiliac joint. So uh, what's very interesting with uh, this plasma technology that you can uh, cut the nerve but we have 40 degrees, and you see what you are cutting. I need to do a more study about this, but when you do, um, when you use percutaneous technology, you cut a very small piece of nerves. With a technology like this, you can cut it for one centimeter. So now I find the nerves, and uh, I do an ablation of uh, this, uh, of this uh, nerve, as you see now. So after I'll go uh, to the uh, second or to the uh, third hole. Now again, I'm going to see, see uh, I'm cutting this. On the, we can do this procedure, uh, it's at about 20, 20, 30 minutes. You have no, no risk because between, now you have a nerve you cut it, you have not a uh, big risk because between the sacral hole and sacroiliac joint, you have only these nerves. So you have no risk for patients. You have X-ray to check that you are not in the hole, and after you can do this. So for the first hole, you have a nerve, and when you finish this, you go to a, to an advanced hole. So after you do a two approach to go between the second and three sacral hole, you find the plexus. Almost of times, the plexus like this. So the same you. Remove it is different at usual surgery because you cut, uh, cut the nerve. Usually you try to decompress them. So you see a very uh, nice plexus. What's interesting with inflow outflow, you don't have uh, water, it's, uh, it's not staying on the field, and you don't have problem after surgery. So uh, the patient after this, uh, no pain. On his crab, a very real improvement. Now I try to do a small study because uh, when you do a fusion like a minimal invasive technology like cyborg, the patient can't uh, put weight on the leg. So it's uh, not possible to do uh, the, the, two, the two side of the same procedure because after the patient could walk. So I'm do a one side with a fusion and the one side with thermoablation. So I operate for patients. The result is faster with sacroiliac joint denervation, but uh, four months after uh, denervation, one patient asked to have fusion to another side. So I think that tubular plasma uh, technology is a good technique for to you to do a denervation. We need to do uh, some studies. I think it's a good alternative to fusion, and uh, it's clearly better than uh, percutaneous technique. Thanks uh, to listen to my uh, presentation. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shalali, for this wonderful presentation and innovative technique. So we can call it the UB Shalali technique. It's very nice. So <clears throat> for the questions, do as usual. I record them and we will answer later. And uh, now, yeah, with uh, the, um, I will introduce the next speaker, uh, who is uh, Dr. Julien Tremlet from the Polyclinic saint Priva, which is based in France. And he will present us uh, his uh, experience uh, using the monopodal full endoscopic interlaminar technique for lumbar disc herniation. As you know, we started uh, recently in France. I, I did uh, the first uh, experience in 2011, but now it's becoming more and more uh, popular and uh, we are very happy to welcome Dr. Treble. It's for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to, to give us the, the occasion to, to speak about uh, 
uh, endoscopy in uh, this uh, GRIT meeting because uh, since this morning we we are watching some very uh, uh, amazing uh, presentations and the techniques about uh, the endoscopy. So. Um, as um, uh, Professor Lurek told you, it's uh, very, very new for, for us in France. Um, and uh, uh, when I look uh, over the presentation, uh, um, I'm like uh, I, I'm like a prehistoric man uh, in the endoscopy world, in the endoscopic world. And um, we are very uh, uh, enthusiastic to to discover this new world of endoscopy. Um, so my topic, uh, I could name it uh, the basics because uh, uh, it is um, uh, one of the, 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 the most uh, first step uh, to begin with uh, the endoscopy. So I will, I will share my screen before, uh, like this, okay, and like this. So about the total full endoscopy and terminal technique for lumbar discaniation. Um, the aim of this topic maybe will uh, uh, give interest to the, the French, uh, the French surgeon who would like to begin with uh, this technique. Uh, maybe in other country, but uh, there is a lot of, uh, lot of advanced technique uh, in other countries. So the technique I will describe uh, was first described by uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Rutten, a German uh, surgeon, and the uh, first publication about this was in uh, two. Uh, 2003. Uh, for myself, I began uh, only in 2016. Uh, so it's uh, now more than five years that uh, I'm doing this. Um, about the, the other several endoscopic techniques, we, we, we will have a, a topic about the Destando, which is uh, an endoscopic assisted technique. Uh, we have seen lots of biportal full endoscopy and the monoportal full endoscopic, uh, there is an interluminal uh, approach and transforminal approach too. Um, to, to do the interluminal approach, uh, we're going to use um, this uh, endoscope, uh, which is a um, uh, 4.1 millimeters diameter endoscope. Uh, length, uh, it is 165 millimeters, and uh, there is an angulation at the tip of the endoscope of uh, uh, 25 degrees uh, to the top of the endoscope and uh, when uh, you will turn the endoscope it's on the, the sleeve channel you, you will increase your uh, your um, field of view uh, about this endoscope uh, you, we can see three parts it is the working channel uh, which is uh, um, the, the, the hole uh, where we will pass all the, the tools and uh, the diameter it is 4.1 millimeters um, the optical lens here, the so what uh, the lens to 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 watch uh, what we are doing, and the irrigation channel. Uh, the water with, uh, will uh, arrive by this wall. Um, something important to understand: we will enter the endoscope by this working sleeve, uh, eight diameters. Um, and the working sleeve is um, as a, um, a round shape, uh, but not about uh, the endoscope, which is not round. And he uh, uh, will turn inside the, the working sleeve, and you can see there is always space um, between the working sleeve and the endoscope. So it means that the water can uh, uh, go out, uh, travel the working channel, and also uh, by passing by uh, the sides of the endoscope. So uh, with this shape of tools, you, you won't have problem of uh, excessive uh, pressure, water pressure inside the, um, the, the spine. Uh, you can use a natural pump like this one, uh, which is uh, manufactured by uh, Wolf um, and specifically for the endoscopy. But you have to know that uh, you can also use others uh, kind of a device of natural pump. Um, I don't use uh, actually the, the, the Wolf and it works uh, uh, the same. Uh, one tool that you have uh, to, to, to use uh, from uh, Wolf with this technique will be the bipolar coagulation system. Uh, so it is a specific uh, generator. 
um, and a specific uh, tip uh, control electrode. Um, the, the, the shape of uh, this electrode uh, will allow you to, to um, reach uh, um, a large, large field of uh, surgical array inside your, your spine. So about this tender approach, the uh, described here the antalomina. Uh, this approach was described after the transforminal approach uh, to um, to um, avoid mutation of the transforminal approach, uh, like the ELAC crest uh, for the L5 uh, S1 and sometimes the L4 L5. Uh, over limitation could be the um, location of the alienation because if the alienation is too above or below the foramen, um, it will be more difficult to, to reach it. Um, and uh, the size of the foramen also can be a limitation for the transformer approach. So that's why um, the transforming, the translam, the sorry, antalaminar approach was described. So uh, for a bigger case, uh, the, the, the best case would be to, to start with uh, an L5, L4, because, uh, sorry, L, um, L5, S1, because uh, um, the interlaminar space will be uh, bigger. Uh, so you have to, to choose a large interlaminar window. Uh, if possibly uh, a paramedian aniation not too major because uh, if it is too major, you will have to retract the um, the dura uh, more. And uh, for the beginning beginners, it could be uh, you could be have some disease, a nerve disease. Um, DNA should be located too far cranially or caudally, um, just to for the first case. Uh, Aniation size shouldn't be so so big, too big, because if you have a big, big aniation, when you pass the ligamentum flavum, uh, you, you, the risk it is to uh, do a dura uh, lesion. Uh, so about the repairs. Um, First, you have to do an AP uh, X-ray uh, view to um, to mark in the middle of um, the interminal window. Um, you will uh, enter uh, your scalpel the very very um, near from the middle line uh, because direction of your endoscope will be divergent like this in the red line. It is the direction of the endoscope. So you have to consider then that you, 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 you start from the middle and you want to reach the recessus so more laterally. So the enter entry point in the skin is uh, very near from the middle line. And with uh, the uh, uh, angulation of the endoscope of 25 degrees, you will have a larger field of view inside the canal. So the incision, it is just uh, one, um, uh, one uh, hole with the, the scalpel. And um, after you will enter the uh, dilator, uh, still control uh, on the AP uh, X-ray view. You will enter the um, um, sleeve uh, channel and uh, you, you will uh, put the lateral view on the X-ray and uh, you are at a good level when uh, you are near from the posterior uh, joint. Uh, after you remove the dilator and um, you will start the real endoscopy uh, introducing your endoscope uh, inside um, the working sleeve. So um, the first thing that you will see uh, with the endoscope uh, is going to be the soft tissues uh, um, on the, um, the ligamentum flavum. Uh, so you have to um, uh, reject the muscles and the soft tissues. Um, you have to, to, to keep your camera in the disc direction. And uh, you always keep your uh, 
a lateral view if you want to, to, to check where we are. Uh, when you are on the Flavum Legate, you, you will uh, open it from the middle line. So here it is uh, uh, the head, here the, the foot, and here it is a lateral, and here the medial. So you will uh, start to um, uh, work the Flavum Ligamentum with uh, the middle line uh, to the lateral. Uh, and uh, um, an important uh, step, it is the first hole that you will do in this uh, flavum ligament. Uh, the, the water can uh, enter inside the spinal canal and um, you will see the soft tissue inside. Uh, classically, you have the, the fat tissues. And uh, after you have done this first hole, you will um, enter the, the scissor inside and you can reach the lateral uh, side of the flavum ligamentum. Uh, you, you have to, to go straight to the, to the joint. So uh, with uh, a movie, uh, it's like this. So you, you, you do the incision with the scissor and uh, at a step you will uh, do the first wall and you can enter the, um, the smooth uh, tip of the scissor inside the canal. So the water reach inside the canal and uh, to retract the, um, the soft tissue inside. Okay, for this part, after uh, you will um, um, remove all the soft tissue inside the canal, so it is a fast tissue and you have to do the co-regulation about uh, the, the um, in, intracanal uh, vessels. And uh, you will identify the uh, lateral side of the uh, passing nerve root. It is very important to, to identify this side of the passing nerve root uh, before continuing and before reaching the, the disc. So here we are removing the fat tissues. Okay. And we can see the, the dura inside. When you, have, when you have vessels, you take the, the coagulation. Uh, because it's very important to, to control the bleeding uh, uh, with uh, the endoscopic uh, techniques. So, okay, after you have identified the lateral side of the nerve root, so you can retract it with the dissector uh, and you will um, be able to enter the working sleeve inside the canal, uh, because you can see here the, the, the shape of the tip of the working sleeve, uh, it is beveled. And first you will enter it, you will reach the disc, uh, the ground of the spinal canal with um, this part of the working sleeve. And when you reach the ground of the spinal, you will be able to uh, turn the working sleeve uh, clockwise or, or, or anti-clockwise, uh, just to protect uh, and to retract the, the nerve roots. So if the, the video is like this, here it is in the um, dissector. Uh, you have to check that the root is uh, free inside the canal, just uh, under the roots, it is uh, the discaniation. And when you enter the working sleeve, uh, and you turn it inside, you will retract and protect the nerve roots and you are directly on your disc and uh, the disc annulation. And after uh, you are in uh, security to, to do the discectomy, uh, so you can open the annulus um, with the, the scissor and uh, um, reject the disc annulation. So here it is a, a specific uh, beginner case. Uh, you can see uh, here the, the, the CT scan. Uh, the 3D reconstruction uh, uh, gives you a good view to, to, um, um, 
to 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 watch the um, terminal window is big enough. Uh, here the MRI you can see in the disk annulation. Uh, the installation is um, a prone uh, like a prone um, installation. Uh, you will do the AP view, uh, do the incision with the scalper, enter the uh, dilator, uh, control on the AP view. After you take the lateral view with the X-rays, and you will continue. You enter the working sleeve like this. You check with a, a lateral X-ray, and you can enter the endoscope. Okay, now you have uh, the muscles and the fat uh, tissues uh, um, outside the canal. Uh, when you clean it, you can uh, uh, identify the flavum ligament. And you will uh, um, enter uh with the scissors you will do the hole in the um, fathom ligaments always from the medial side to the lateral like this it is the first hole and you continue to lateral uh to um, in direction of the uh, facet joint Okay, now you have the passing route. This is the lateral side. So you do the coagulation uh, in the recessus. And you know that just uh, um, below the root, uh, it's gonna be the, the disc that uh, you, can, uh, you can touch with uh, this electrode or with the uh, distal like this so you control the root is free enough and after you can you will be able to to turn your working slave to protect the nerve so it's like this we're going to turn Okay, like this. And now the nerve is protected and we are able to do the discectomy. We can see here uh, a part of the discaneration. Um, you open the uh, annulus and after you can reject the discaneration. So sometimes you will have a big discannulation and uh, uh, to, to get out of the, the spine, you will, ha you will have to remove with the scope like this. So you, you take care to, to keep the working sleeve in place and it's okay. So you do the hemostasis and um, to know if uh, the decompression is uh, done, you have this uh, specific sign of the floating wound, root, sorry, the floating uh, root inside the canal. So now it's done. You can remove all and uh, do uh, you just have uh, one uh, one point of suture like this, okay. Perfect. So um, for me, the advantage uh, of uh, the monoportal full endoscopic will be the, the minimal postoperative pain, like uh, the endoscopic uh, techniques. Uh, here you have only one incision, a minimal soft tissue resection, a less fibrosis than uh, in open technique, and a minimal cost of the disposable equipment uh, with uh, this technique. Disadvantage uh, is the learning curve and um, you have to, to, to learn uh, a, it's a new uh, endoscopic landmarks and a new handling with this uh, technique. So thanks for your attention. And I give you back the screen.
Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Tremlett, for this uh, nice presentation. Uh, after seeing so many uh, experts with uh, very difficult cases, this was very interesting to have uh, a teaching for beginners because uh, we want to expand those kind of techniques. So this was a very nice uh, uh, review of all the small details that are important at the beginning. Thank you for that. So we will uh, move uh, now for the next speaker, the last one of this session. And the next speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Schuller uh, Sebastian, uh, who is uh, from uh, Strasbourg uh, in France at the Centre de Chirurgie du Rachis Clinique Rena. And uh, he will uh, present the bilateral over the top decompression for lumbar spinal stenosis. Welcome, Sebastian. Sebastian, are you online? Yes. Okay, it's better. I was here. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Charlie and uh, Jean-Charles Huec. Uh, my topic is the bilateral over-the-top decompression for lumbar spinal stenosis. Uh, oh. Quickly, my conflict of interest uh, with river spine. Uh, this technique uh, was described by uh, Professor Sebastian Richardson in 2011. And uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Tremler, I started uh, on my endoscopic history in uh, two so, uh, 2016 and uh, I with this um, discanation. And uh, I start uh, uh, the, this procedure, uh, this uh, over the top techniques uh, in fe February last year. You have two sorts of um, stenosis in the spine, uh, lumbar spinal canal. You have the central stenosis and you have the lateral stenosis from the recesses of or, uh, the foraminal stenosis. I just uh, developed the, uh, the antelamer approach. I don't speak about the foraminal approach. It's uh, Ralf Wagner, I speak about this uh, after, uh, 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 later. For the lateral, pro uh, for the lateral uh, stenosis, you have uh, two sorts. You have the recess, and uh, this uh, sort of uh, stenosis is possible with uh, one antelamer approach. For the other one, for the foraminal approach, it's only for with um, uh, for, for the for the foraminal stenosis is only with a foraminal approach. For the central stenosis, uh, you have the the hypertrophy of the of the flavum. Who the cause? You have the disc. Uh, what who was in the cause? You have the sometimes the spondylolisthesis. Uh, and this, uh, all, all this uh, sort of stenosis uh, can be um, uh, open with uh, um, um, over the top technique from one antelamina approach. You have uh, uh, for 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 choose. Uh, uh, which uh, approach for opening the, the compression uh, uh, for the antilaminar approach is only central stenosis and sometimes the recess stenosis. Okay. For central stenosis, the conventional treatment uh, is open or microscope laminectomy with, with or without uh, fusion or the both. The problem of this technique is the, the instability uh, because when you, you touch uh, the, the facet joint, you, you need to fix it uh, because you create an 
instability and uh, when you open the, mus the muscle you have uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, a low back pain because you are you you damage you have a you make a damage of this muscle and you are back pain on the scarring the alternative of this uh, of the conventional treatment is a full endoscopic decompression of spinal canal um, with an interlaminar approach. You have two, two, two instruments. You, you can do this with a small uh, vertebral lumbar, uh, eight millimeters, uh, like for the um, discarnation. And you can use uh, uh, an instrument, uh, a bigger instrument, spe specifically uh, developed for the stenosis. And for the stenosis, I use uh, the, the second one. Sometimes for the recess uh, compression, I can use the vertebral vertebral lumbar, it's smallest, but for uh, over the top technique, you need to use a uh, vertebral stenosis. Oh, the, the endoscope on the working sleeve, it's exactly the same. It's the same, uh, uh, the same techniques, but the, the diameter is bigger, okay? Uh, and uh, you have uh, no one irrigation channel, but you have two irrigation channels in uh, um, stenosis endoscope. 